Okay, in this video we are going to um, look at the analysis of a steel column using the AISC approach um, by looking at example 18.4. So we're looking at example 18.4 and we are asked to calculate the allowable axial compressive load. So P allowable. What is the allowable load that can be applied to our column? Using the AISC approach, the column ends are pinned. Okay, so what is the significance of that? That means that the K value is 1.0. So we do not have to modify the length of the column uh, in order to calculate the effective length. The effective length is the unbraced length. Um, Fy, uh, yield stress, is equal to 50 KSI <clears throat> because it is a W12 by 50. Wide flange sections are made typically from A992 steel, which has a yield stress of 50 KSI. Um, we need to look up a W12 by 50 in the appendix to find out some information about it. Uh, wide flange sections can be found in Appendix A, so let's look that up. Okay, so I'm looking at a W12 by 50 in the appendix, and uh, let's see, it looks like the area, you might need to know the area, uh, is 14.6 square inches. What else might we need to know? We might need to know the, um, the least moment of inertia. I sub y, um, which is for 12 by 50, it looks like that value is 56.3. We need to know the least radius of gyration. The least radius of gyration is 1.96. So it the the least is the i uh, the y axis. Um, the i y is less than the i x, and the r y is less than the r x, and that's in inches. Um, anything else we need to know? Section modulus? No, that's for bending. Same for plastic section modulus. Um, yeah. I think that's it. I think that's all the information we might need to know for analyzing the column. Uh, we need to uh, let's see, go back to the problem statement to get the unbraced length, which is 15 feet. Um, it's going to be more convenient for us to uh, have this unbraced length in inches. So 15 times 12 is 180. So the unbraced length is 180 inches. So now we can um, take a look at our KL over R, our slenderness ratio for this beam. KL over R. K is 1.0 because it's pinned pinned at both ends. The length is 180 inches. And the least radius of gyration, R sub Y, is 1.96 inches. So 180 divided by 1.96 is equal to 91.8. Now what we have to do is we have to compare that to 4.71 times the square root of E over, um, what was it, E over F sub Y. That's it, E over F sub Y which is 4.71 times the square root of 30,000 divided by 50. And uh, we calculated that value earlier. And what did we find that to be? 115.4. Okay, so is 91.8 compared to 115.4 greater or less than, obviously it is less than. 91.8 is less than 
0.4. So that means we have a low KL over R. This is a relatively short and stout column, which of course means we have to use the more complicated of the two equations. That's just the, the way it seems to, to be. So, um, so that equation is that the allowable load, P allowable, is equal to 0.658. That's a constant. That's always the same. To the power of, raised up to the power of, this ratio of F sub Y over F sub E. F sub Y is 50 KSI. And we're going to divide that by the Euler stress, F sub E. Well, we haven't calculated that yet, so we need to do that. F sub E is equal to what? Um, that equation is pi squared E over KL over R squared. Okay, so this is pi squared times 30,000 divided by KL over R, which is our slenderness ratio, which we've already calculated. So why calculate it again? Let's just plug in that 91.8, and don't forget that that gets squared. Okay, so let's calculate this out, and we get 35.1, and I'm going to carry an extra significant figure for now. 35.13 KSI is the Euler critical stress. So according to Euler, this is the stress that's going to make our buckle, our column buckle. That goes into the AISC equation. So we're going to take 50 divided by 35.13. KSI, all this is in the exponent, 0.658 is raised up to that power. And I can close that bracket. And then we multiply it by Fy, the yield stress, 50 KSI, times the area. We looked up the area and found that it is 14.6. And all of this gets divided by, let me try to be neat drawing my division bar, uh, divided by 1.67. Okay, so let's start calculating. We've got 0.658 to the power of parentheses. 50 divided by 35.13 in parentheses. That equals like 0.55 times 50 times 14.6 equals like 402. And then divide that by 1.67 and we get a final answer of 241. 241 kips. Uh, rounded to three significant figures, is the allowable load, according to the American Institute of Steel Construction, the AISC, who uh, publishes these formulas um, for steel construction. Using their formulas, we find that the allowable load is 241 kips. Um, if we wanted to find just for the sake of curiosity, this is not specifically asked for in the question, but if we wanted to take that uh, uh, 241 kips divided by our area of 14.6 square inches to find what the actual stress is, the allowable stress in our column. It'd be 241 divided by 14.6 equals 16.5 KSI. So this is the uh, allowable stress. Um, compare that to the Euler stress, and you can see it's significantly less. It's less than half. So, um, and that's because of factors of safety. These equations will require
finding is what is allowed by code. Um, so uh, of course it's going to be conservative, 16 and a half KSI, uh, less than half of the stress that we would expect to cause it to buckle. Um, but as a structural engineer, if we were analyzing this column, we would say that it's capable of supporting 241 kips of load. So that just about does it for column analysis. Uh, this chapter will stretch out over two weeks. And so next week, we will look at column design. So um, the difference between analysis and design is that in analysis, we're given the size of the column. We're given the length of the column. Um, oftentimes, we're given the uh, loads. And we're just asked, is this OK? Is it acceptable? Or we're asked to find what is the um, capacity was the allowable load. Uh, with design, we're given the loads and we need to size the column. We need to choose how big it needs to be. But that can wait until next week. For now, we'll stick with analysis. And uh, I believe that's, uh, that's all we need to cover.